Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. It's a, it's a wonderful morning to be alive. And we're here with uh, Dr. Suresh Raja, Sinus Relief. Um, he is uh, underwriting the show, and we are um, so proud to have him present to talk about advancements in sinus relief, his new office in Jupiter, right. being on staff at Jupiter Medical. I mean, there's just so much going on with him. But in, uh, as an individual, he's a truly impressive man. And uh, so although we've had him in the past and we've sort of touched on asthma, Aspects of his talents and his life as a surgeon, and uh, you got a fascinating story too. And I'm hoping oh, yeah. we have time for you to, to tell that for folks um, that didn't catch the show with you because oh, it was uh, a few months ago. Yeah, it was. It's it's been a little bit. It's uh, it's available on podcast. That's right. So if you missed it, you can go to iTunes podcast. You can do it. You can uh, download the, it there. Subscribe to Maximum Health and download it there. Um, also, WJNO. Again, WJNO.com, and uh, we've got the Connect tab, and you'll see the uh, podcast section and um, uh, your face all over the place. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> with a, with a, just a grin, just a happy. <laughs> and that uh, outtake that everybody's talking about where I drank the brown juice. Oh, man, oh, no. that was so funny. <laughs> I still <laughs> listen to it to laugh. <laughs> so, so, Joel, uh, Dr. Suresh, I, I don't know if you heard the last uh, show, but, you know, or the show before last, we, we did juicing and we talked about the benefits of that and, and the far reaching health benefits and emotional, physical, so forth and so on. But in the process Carol Maglia was here. And so what she did was she prepared juice beforehand and brought it in for Joel. And you can tell Joel is cool, he's he's you know, great and he's willing to try most things. And this was a difficult thing that we heard on on the air yeah we, we could tell it was like you could hear a pin drop as he was tasting yeah. his juice well, was it not very tasty well Joel? she gave me well she, she gave me some juice she brought some juice in the first week and it tasted more like juice like the stuff that i'm used to as juice sweet yeah. and whatnot yeah. and i said you know kick it up a notch let me let me be daring let me try but instead of kicking it up just a notch i think she would agree that she kicked it up several yes, notches and she yes. brought in some brown juice it didn't do- go down quite as well as I would have liked. Ken here drank the drank the rest of it and liked it. Uh, yeah, but but you're you know, used to juicing. Exactly. My my palate's developed quite a bit over the years of juicing. But you know, so out there, what I was going to say is, if you haven't heard it, go to the podcast, download it. It's hilarious and it's wonderful. As right. and it's just, it's just, it's inspiring. Um, and so here we are today. We've got Dr. Suresh, and we definitely want to get into some of why. I mean, I know right now as a physician, holistic physician, man, I'm so busy with the flu season and the colds and the allergies. But tell me the some of the scope of why a person would search out Dr. Raja Sinus Relief. Well, good morning, good morning Dr. Sir. Ken. Thank you, Joel. Uh, well, I would say that... Um, uh, really, it's how you breathe. If you do not breathe well from your nose, if you do not breathe well, you know, even orally, if you're not sleeping well because you're not breathing, uh, you and, and if you believe it's coming from above your collarbones, uh, then, you know, if it's enough of a problem, you should come and see me. Hmm. Yeah. So, so you, you know, obviously over the years you've had several intake forms. What do you see when you see a patient? What are some of the complaints? You okay. Know, general complaints? I would say mostly it's a headache, nasal congestion, tremendous amount of nasal discharge, fatigue, um, you know, taking a lot of medications for recurrent upper respiratory infections that don't seem to go away. Mm. Uh, maybe the allergic person who has dabbled in shots or maybe um, took medication for a while on and off, um, but just at this point can't breathe, can't smell, can't sleep, you know, and whatever the varying um, combinations of both of those actually can be. Mm. So, uh, you know, bad noses. I'm a bad nose doctor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, we need you. And, you know, the thing is, uh, let's back up a bit. There's one thing you said that I know is complicated, and I wanted you to touch on that and just kind of take us from A to Z on it, is the the congestion, the, the, the lung congestion part, the reoccurring. Mm-hmm. It's Most people don't think of that as having to do with the sinuses. Right. Can you tell us at what point they should be concerned about this reoccurring lung congestion and piece it together with the sinuses or what point you do it i i think uh, breathing for for me involves anything that has respiratory tissue so that wouldn't just be the nose but also actually be the ears because the middle ears are lined with uh with respiratory lining and of course the lungs Mm. so anywhere where there's respiratory lining or really anywhere where your body is exposed to the environment even the eyes because now we're getting into allergies you know what i was going to bring that up i Mm -hmm. wear contact lenses yeah 
and um, the kind that you can sleep in. And I have had to, every day for the last two weeks, take them out, rinse them off and, you know, with the saline and put them back in because they get foggy. And I'm, I'm chalking it up to allergies or, or whatnot. Yeah, I think so. Remember, we, um, we, we're all filters. So our eyes are our filters. Our nose is a filter. You know, our lungs are filters. Uh, and so we're constantly trying to purify, right, even the lungs, right? The lungs ultimately filters oxygen into the bloodstream. Mm. Right, so you have to yeah. filter all those particles. You are known for a few things. One of the biggest things is that you have magic. I wouldn't say even say gold hands. You you've got diamond, platinum, you know, hands because what you're able to do is these minimally invasive surgeries that are very difficult for most surgeons of your um, area to do. Um, what are some of these things that you do to help people with sinuses that are different than other physicians? And what, what is it that you're offering that people search, search you out for? Well, thanks for the compliment, Dr. Ken. Uh, I would think that I'm just a recipient of being at the right place at the right time. And I just happen to be uh, able to experience the different evolutions in, in uh, sinus treatment over the past two decades, which is basically just a reflection of my age, where I trained, who I met up with, just the way life is. So, um, you know, right now the, the biggest innovation is, is to be able to do a 20 minute office procedure in my office for people who do have bad noses and, uh, have them walk out, uh, with what is a completely different nose. And to me to be able to do that, uh, in, in, in a very simple way with an amazing innovative instrument, very safely and very comfortably for my patients, it's a blessing. So i just feel blessed. And, and one of these I remember we talked last time was about balloon sinuplasty. This is the specific procedure, and essentially what it does is it um, it takes a fiber optic wire that is very very soft. It can't even break an egg yolk, and it's uh, it's inside of a device that has two levers. One lever advances the fiber optic wire, and the other lever advances a balloon over the wire. And this is basically technology that is very similar to how they stretch. Um, coronary arteries and so what we do is we uh, attach the fiber optic wire to a very strong xenon light source and uh, we pass it with this device in one hand and um, the endoscope the telescope in the other hand we navigate this through uh, various tips that are shaped to get into six different sinuses in your head Uh, x marks the spot above the forehead and um, below the eyes so that x there that people have sinus pressure from those are four out of the six and there's two more that are essentially in the center of your head, about 9 to 10 centimeters deep. So we're able to use three different tips to access these six sinuses. Uh, and essentially we do that is by placing this fiber optic wire through the natural opening of that sinus cavity. We turn off the lights. We see the bright light located exactly where that sinus is that we want to be dilated. Uh, we can be assured that we are in the natural outflow tract because we're in the sinus with the wire. So then we pass the balloon over the wire, and we gently inflate it to uh, five times the pressure of an automobile tire. And what that does is it remodels all that eggshell, thin bone, all that porous, spongy bone that's around there, and pushes it to the side permanently against the harder skull bones. Uh, And you effectively are uh, supercharging your nose. You're making that natural opening bigger so more air can get in and more mucus can get out. And if you have the experience of the amount of sinus surgery that I've done over the past two decades, which is, you know, really around 3,000 regular sinus surgeries before this evolution took place, as I mentioned, I've I've been a a recipient of three or four different uh, revolutions, and each one becomes more and more dramatic. So this, this current one... Uh, is is just an unbelievable thing because we're targeting exactly where people have trouble. We are not removing any tissue at all. In fact, the old surgery that I used to do uh, with uh, things called micro debriders and shavers, I mean, it sounds aggressive, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so that type there's of not surgery. Much room for error. N- no, there's a lot more risk. There's no risk for the balloon at all. You're, you're, I mean, you, you can't have any issues with the eye or with the brain. Uh, But uh, now I call those, or even the companies that are developing these products, we call those surgeries, the surgeons who do those surgeries, tissue takers. Okay, And even that has kind of like a negative connotation, but that's how we used to do it, and that's how I still do it. Uh, But in the past 15 or 16 months since I've done this procedure, 
Um, I've done just under 200 of them, and um, I've only done about three or four regular sinus surgeries for more advanced cases. And all of those balloon cases have been in my office under very controlled, safe conditions. So it's it's a complete revolution, really. You know, you're talking about this, and I can't help but um, visualize you. Obviously, you're, you're here, but I'm sure the audience listening will, will agree. There's a sense of your care, uh, compassion, your desire and strive to really offer, yes, quality surgery, technically advanced surgery, but you're caring for the patient's comfort in the process, which is not always the case in, uh, with a lot of surgeons. You know, it's very goal-oriented, very driven towards the symptomatology. You seem to really be uh, holistically approaching the sinus. Well, you know, I think, you, you know, problems. I think it needs to be said that uh, the doctors are part of the community. So uh, this is my community. This is where I live. So if I'm treating my friends and my patients and my patients' friends and their family, uh, and I happen to, to see them because this is my community, I will always ask how they're doing. And, of course, I would want them to do well. So if, uh, you know, if they come and see me as their doctor, then uh, I will always do my best for them because that's my job. I'm curious to n- hear about some of your influences and, you know, uh, as Joel said, we, you, you touched on it before, but how, what gave you sort of the impetus, the, the beginnings of, of pursuing this path? Well, um, you know, specifically ear, nose, and throat. To be a surgeon and then, of course, that too. Right. I, you know, I think uh, I come from a um, you know, typical uh, immigrant family, and uh, my father came over with very uh, little money in his pocket, and... Uh, uh, he left everything behind to um, better his children, you know. So I came to this country when I was two years old from India, uh, right to uh, Manhattan, mm-hmm. and uh, that's where I did my early schooling from, uh, you know, kindergarten to fifth grade public schools. And I think you you, you grow up with a certain, um, I don't know, you you, really, you grow up with a certain ability to 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 want to succeed. And I think you get that ultimately from your parents, yeah. Dr. Ken. I, I mean, agree. honestly, yeah. it's all about your parents. It's about your mother and your father. I am all about the family structure. I, I can't tell my story without yeah. my mother or my, my father that raised me being involved. It's just not possible. Yeah. So I agree with but you. But it's a typical immigrant story. You know, yeah. one, one, one generation always wants the next generation to do better in every way. Or should. <laughs> right. Or should. Exactly. Well, yeah, should. Mm-hmm. Well, then your 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 father was also a surgeon, correct? He he is actually an ear, nose, and throat doctor as well. But right. he was uh, he had his own private hospital in um, in his hometown. He was the uh, second oldest of six brothers, and he was the only one with a college education. So um, his um, father died while he was in medical school, and his older brother put him through medical school, and he came back to his hometown, and he was actually a very successful doctor there for. Um, you know, about 10 years, property, car, back back in the, you know, um, early 60s. Uh, he left all that, and he left everything to his brothers, as they would do in an extended family, uh, you know, culture. Um, and uh, he had $200 in his pocket. He hopped on a plane to become a doctor uh, in the United States, but he didn't know that he was going to be ear, nose, and throat. He had a one-year contract, okay, one-year contract, that they provided food and lodging and, you know, he had enough money to bring the family over right away because as a lot of people know out there, sometimes they don't bring the family right away. Uh, that was back in 1968. So, um, you know, he, he, he went through a lot to get to where he is and each year he had to find out what his next specialty was. So he did like an internship year, a surgical year, and then after that, then he knew he was going to be an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And he was even offered an advanced fellowship uh, to do head and neck surgery with one of the greats one of the greats of, of uh, head and neck surgery at the heyday of when things were going down. Uh, his name was Dr. John Conley, which actually was a hospital in New York City that I ended up uh, rotating through after he died. His mentor taught me, and he, he didn't take it because they didn't pay you for a fellowship back then. It was a two-year fellowship, and you did it for free. Okay, so really it's all about the education. It's yeah. about the parents. It's about the education. Yeah. You know? Uh. You're extremely successful, which you should be, um, but you're also humble, which you don't have to be. How do you keep that balance of the presence that you have as, in, as, as a person? What are some of the techniques that you employ? Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? What do you... 
Uh, I'm a I'm a very Eastern person for sure. At, although I was a very Western Porsche, uh, person my first half of my life, but I'm becoming more Eastern as I get older. Uh, and I do believe that there's a, a East meets West kind of convergence going on in, in in this world right now. But certainly, I um I I do practice meditation and yoga, and and uh, I try to be very mindful and have good intentions in everything that I do. And uh, you know, I'm a Hindu, so I mean, that's that's I'm very very Eastern. Um, when you say you're a Hindu, what does that mean? What is, you know, because, you know, I think Hinduism, I know, is there, there's there's definite aspects of it that's sort of intertwined with yoga and people know some of the language and words and, you know, but they don't always put it together. And I don't know if people really know how, how much of that um, spiritual practice is part of uh, their lives when they're involved with Ayurvedic and, and yoga and all of those, you know, sections. I think people that that um, are attracted to that are attracted to that for a reason. Um, you know, not everybody does yoga, not everybody does meditation. Maybe everyone that you know, Dr. Ken, or who we're connected to feel that way. But, right. you know, really, um, all of those things that you're mentioning are part of our ancient um, religious texts, the, mm-hmm. the Vedas. I mean, they're all in there. They're eight to 10,000 years old. Hinduism is, um, you know, the oldest religion. And, um, you know, so a lot of the elements have been um, sort of um, uh, brought over to, to the Western world for, uh, for everyone's benefit. You know, yoga, meditation, natural medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, you know, all these things even Buddhism comes from Hinduism, so all the all the acupuncture, all the natural healing, naturopath, you're an oriental healer. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, for me, for me, okay, I'm not saying for everyone, everything goes back to to Hinduism. Mm-hmm. Okay? And and uh that that's just that's just the way uh I feel. As far as basics, what are some of the pillars? Okay, well the three the three main concepts of Hinduism are karma, dharma and reincarnation. Right. Right. Dharma, that was uh, that was that show, right? Yeah, Dharma, Greg, and Greg and Dharma. Yeah, was, uh, mm-hmm. was that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of people have heard of karma, uh, Dharma, and then what? Reincarnation. Oh, well, really? we've heard of those two. Yes. I've never heard of Dharma though. Okay, Dharma, Dharma is is uh, really what your commitment is in life. Um, you know uh, what your duty is, what your commitment is. So if you have a family, you have a family commitment. If you have a business, you have a business commitment. If you are a student then you have a commitment to your education. And your dharma is basically fulfilling all your commitments in the most highest possible way. So you have a duty, okay? You have, and dharma, people will say, well, it means duty. It does mean that you have a duty, but I would, I would think of it more like a commitment. You, you need to have a commitment in order to fulfill your duties. And if you do that, you're following your dharma. You know, I'm reading about uh, Einstein the other day, uh, one of the greatest geniuses of the human race um not just any race but the human race and you know he broke down things and he showed us how you know really at the bare essence we're all the same material well, we are all light yeah i think he so had a, it's a, not much different like than that. what you're saying mm-hmm. is ingrained in this 10 i think he had a quote he says we are we are all light beings mm-hmm. that's a quote from einstein mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh so yeah he transcended any i think uh, any religion or any you know uh, sort of uh, race, what have you, to uh, make that statement. And, and I think we're still learning that. I think we're still experiencing that. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, as I'm learning more about you, just sitting here, yes, I have the pleasure of being personally connected, um, but the the idea that you're restoring people's breathing, their ability to breathe, and then in the process, your influence is is deepening their breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, well, you know, uh, I, I, there's an association there, and I'm not sure if I'm expressing it right. What do you think, Joel? Am I, uh, I, am I you, you guys it? are blowing my mind. With the, with <laughs> the whole I, reincarnation I, I, and the, <laughs> the, the we no, are light. I mean, you I'm can't just help uh, but see you this know. connection because I you look, know, I think when I do the balloons on the patients, uh, Ken, you know, they a lot of them just don't come back. Right. So they don't have a problem anymore. Right. So and that's you know. and you know and it's, it's <laughs> well, funny. That's, that's good. You know. I funny know, but say, I guess you know, I work, but they're not connecting with right. me. You know, right? If you own a, if you own a restaurant, you want them to come back exactly, quite often. Yeah. But with, you know, with the business like what you run, you know, doctor's right. office, I guess it's a good thing if they're coming to get the this done that yeah. they don't have to come back. 
Um, how long does the uh, balloon sinuplasty, how long does that, uh, they get, that isn't something that you just get done once and it's done forever, is it? Uh, it is, actually. Oh, it, per- is? it permanently remodels the openings so, so that uh, they stay open. I mean, it doesn't get rid of allergies, okay? That's the whole thing I tell my patients. It would be a miracle if it could, so. So if you're allergic to pollen, you're allergic to pollen. It's right. Just so it, it opens well, the, up the pores the so The way to think get- about it is that when you take a chemical, Okay, if you take a nose spray, if you take a pill, essentially what you're trying to do is reduce the swelling right around what I call the sinus valve, which is the narrow passageway that needs to be open in order for the sinuses to breathe. And I always tell my patients that your nose only breathes as well as your sinuses breathe. And if your sinuses don't breathe well, your nose doesn't breathe well. So you can take these chemicals. What happens when you have allergies is it causes more swelling in those very narrow areas. When you take the chemicals, you are trying to reduce the swelling and prevent that allergic response from shutting it down so you don't breathe and, you, you know, and then you have headaches. But what the balloon does is it, it really just completely goes exactly where that opening is, like being the ultimate plumber, and just opening it up as minimally as possible to get the maximum effect. But it doesn't take away allergies. So I have a lot of my patients that are very allergic that also require allergy shots, and they, those patients I do see. You know, until their allergies are desensitized, and then perhaps I don't see that anymore. But that can take a year or two. Are you offering that in your office? Sure. We have a full-service allergy lab. In fact, I just went to um, a, 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 a lecture by one of the, you know, really just the grandfather's of endoscopic sinus surgery, Dr. David Kennedy. Uh, I mean, he's been, he really was the one who brought the original deal here 20, 30 years ago. He won't even operate on somebody unless they go through um allergy testing and if they don't if they decline allergy treatment he doesn't even do their surgery yeah. so i mean i'm a little bit more open than that people have you know time problems and you know but uh, that's how that's how part of it of it it is we have about uh, two minutes left so i just i wanted to make sure that we we get uh, uh dr raja's information out there i mean if this is the um, if this is the first time you're hearing from him again uh, we did have a show a few months ago, I don't know, a couple of months ago, whenever it was. You can go to WJNO.com's uh, podcast there or uh, iTunes as well. Look for Maximum Health and uh, download those. But I, I wanted to get your information out there, and uh, I wanted to say, um, you know, on behalf of myself and everyone here at WJNO, thank you for underwriting this show. Thank you, Joel. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you, Dr. Raja. So, thank you. So how does somebody – I know you have a website. I do, Dr. Raja Sinus Relief. Uh, there's plenty of information there, contact information. I have three offices now. So. And that's dot .com. Yeah. Is that's it Dr. Dr. Rajas, DR or Dr. Doc, Dr. D-R-R-A-J-A, sinusrelief.com. And, so. and, uh, and give us, I guess, well, I guess they'll just get the information there. We don't, I'm, I guess, with three right. offices, how do you yes. get the phone numbers? Well, the phone numbers are there, but, you know, I'm in, I'm in all of Palm Beach County. I'm in Jupiter. I'm in Wellington. You, I'm in Boynton. Now, you're just moving to Jupiter now. You want to talk I about am, that? I am. I am. I, uh, April 1st is when it starts, and we're hoping to see patients by the middle of the month. And, uh, I'm so excited about it. I'm just so happy to have an office in my backyard. Really, that was the main impetus of it. Mm-hmm. I don't mind the commuters. I, you know, commute. I, I love all my patients, but I just would love to have an office in my backyard. Mm. And where is that in Jupiter? It's on uh, alternate A one A Three Palms Professional Plaza. That's a wonderful plaza. And yeah, the other two offices. The other two off. One is in Wellington on the campus of Wellington Regional Medical Center, mm. and the other one's on uh, Boynton in, in Boynton Beach and Jog and Boynton Beach Boulevard. All very accessible. Very nice. Awesome. Anything else you want to do? With oh yes, definitely. I, you know, just to reiterate, you know. Uh, as a as a surgeon who restores breathing, uh, restores breath, you're also increasing the patient's uh, general ability to to breathe, and I think your Im- influence is far reaching. Um, that being said, you know because we we looked at a, that full scope. What are some of the preventative things that you might suggest? That a, that a patient can do to protect their sinuses? Um, would it be a little bit of diet? Would it be certain um, things, you know, whether it's neti pot, which is <laughs> fairly Ayurvedic, obviously. Sure, it is. I, I, a lot of it is air quality. If okay. you think you're allergic, you know, you, you really shouldn't be running the fans uh, at night when you sleep. And you should be getting your air conditioner serviced at least twice a year. I get Changing that filter, too, fil- right? Filters, but also filters getting it serviced. The they yeah. do, but even to get it, uh, you know, I have a UV light in my air conditioner. I have a, a special cleaning system. We live hermetically sealed here in Florida because okay. uh, it's all about filters. And also, of course, to, to rinse out your nose is 
of you know a five thousand year old Ayurvedic remedy. But uh, it, I tell my patients do that all the time. If everyone just washed out their nose, mm-hmm. you know, we started out as fish, didn't we, Doctor Ken? Mm. You know, and when we're born, they have that reflex. You go into the placenta. I mean, you come out and you come out, and and uh, you 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 went from breathing water in the amniotic sac. Yeah. All right. Now, now you guys are blowing my mind. Okay, again. I'm <laughs> just saying uh, we're gonna have to wrap up the show. Um, well, our new underwriter for uh, maximum health quality living with Dr. Ken Gray. New underwriter, Dr. Raja Sinus Relief, Dr. Suresh Raja. Again, thank you very much, and we appreciate you uh, uh, being aboard, Ken. Yes, uh, continue to breathe, uh, yoga, tai chi, all of it. Get out there, uh, rinse your nose with a neti pot. You can be you, that can be found in most places, most yeah, health stores, Whole Foods, you know. And um, Dr. Raja, um, uh, welcome. This is a wonderful uh, advancement for Jupiter. Uh, Dr. Raja, sinus relief, and uh, thank you for joining us at Maximum Health, Dr. Ken Gray, Quality Living. I think I have a sneeze coming. <laughs> <laughs>